Oh, thank you for uh, turning into my YouTube channel. I titled it Underground. As always, I, I start out a little introductory. I explained that uh, I was trying to come up with a title. I was thinking about the underground church in present day China and Iran, where the outpouring of the Spirit of God is just overwhelming. And the church is just growing every day under great persecution. It always seems like that uh, in the times of need, God is always there for us. And things expand. Uh, at that time, as you know, I, a lot of times I explain that I'm not a, a scholar. I, I try to uh, act like I know the answers to everything. I'm just a, a simple man. I, I love to talk about God. I started making videos. Actually, it's been four years. Four years ago, I started, I was fighting my cancer and I survived my cancer. And I, I started making videos and... <laughs> Just to get out the Word of God, I, I didn't get out that much uh, to go to church or anything like that and have health issues. And, and uh, I don't have a current church that I attend that often at the moment. And so I, I started making videos just, I wanted to be obedient to God and uh, just talk about how He's done so much in my life. And uh, it's expanded so much, there's, there's just been outpouring the last few months especially in my channels, you know, according to the internet, it's a few hundred people, it's over 300, it's like 322 subscribers, but it's expanding more, and I believe that's because God takes something that's imperfect, something simple like a, a guy that stutters in front of the camera just to uh, get the word out there to other people. And that's what I do. I, I, I try not to be impressive. I'm not charismatic, but I want to be honest and talk about my struggles in my life and how God helps me and motivate people to study the word. And that, that's what this is all about. I'm not, I'm 58 years old. I'm still learning. I'm not a hundred percent in everything about the word of God. I'm still learning, making mistakes as I go, but I, I'm trying to motivate others to study. And I was thinking about a title and I keep thinking about well, am I done? Have I, you know, I, I've explained things where we're in this, right now we're in the Psalm 83 war. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. And we are in the season uh, the, of a rapture. The body of Christ is going to be called up real soon. Sometimes it seems surreal. Maybe if that's the word I should say. But uh, especially when I talk to people, my family or friends, many, many don't. Don't uh, see it quite the way I do. But I believe God's going to call us up soon. And everything's about bringing the Jewish people into obedience with God and uh, realizing who the Messiah, the true Messiah was. And I believe that's what the rapture, uh, rapture, I'm sorry. I believe that's what the rapture was all about. I meant rapture there. I go with my thought process. I have memory issues. Tribulation. Church is in tribulation. That's just my title my church, uh, the channel, the uh, underground. And I was thinking about the underground church. Is Christian church has always been tribulation. And there's things about trials and tribulation that we deal with. And a lot of people are like, you know, they, they misread or they're like, well, we're, we're going to go through tribulation. The church, the body of Christ goes through tribulation. The body of Christ has been going through tribulation since it started. You know, there's 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 people. I mean, like I say today in the world, there's people that if, if you're carrying a Bible, you can be killed in certain areas. Uh, Romans. I often talk about the Romans, how they threw the Christians to the uh, in the Colosseum to the lions. So there's been great persecution of the of the Christian church for many times. And when I talk about church and things, I, I'm mean about the body of Christ. I do not mean a ba about a church building. That's where people misunderstand uh, the body of Christ. We come together and we worship God. When there's two or more together, Jesus is present. But it's not a building. Uh, man makes makes it a building. Now, even though the apostles came together and made it churches, and and there was, if you go back and study, even the apostles, because we are a flesh. Even the apostles argued. Paul and Barnabas got in a big argument with, uh, 
I'm sorry, my memory's not that good. I didn't have it in my notes. But I believe it was with Matthew or, or one of the other uh, disciples. They got a big argument and they left. So we're imperfect. As I say many times over, God could take imperfection and make perfect. Uh, there is people that have commented that I know that that are a study uh, that God takes someone like me who has trouble speaking and stutter, and I'm still awkward in front of a camera and always will be. Uh, I can, I'm a combat veteran. I've spent 21 years in the military, and, and I could get up in front of a bunch of people and speak. Well, as of now, I, I have trouble. I have a cosmic bag because my cancer is permanent. It makes noises, so it's kind of embarrassing to be in front of a bunch of people. Even when I make these videos, I have a towel wrapped around it and around my waist. You don't see it. Just the muffled noises that I, I make because there's no way I can sit here and talk for 10 minutes or more without noises coming out of my stomach. And it's an embarrassment. The grandkids laugh at Papa, but it's, it's reality. And it, it, it can be embarrassing in front of people. So I do the best I can. And that's, that's why I make these videos. Because I, I want to speak about God. I'm going to be able to talk about God. I, I look forward to the rapture that I could be with my family in Christ. Like I tell my youngest son, he listens to me all so much. I'm so proud of him because my oldest son doesn't listen to me and my, my daughter doesn't listen. But my, my youngest son always listens to me. He's a good young man. I, ha I have a lot of, I'm very proud of him. But, uh, My wife last night, I'm sorry if my mind's wandering, I was trying to talk to her, we're separated, and I was trying to talk to her last night, and I still take care of her, that's that's how husbands do, and we, I pay her all of her bills and everything, she just has her own space, she does, she has anxiety problems and all this, she has trouble dealing with anything, so I take care of her, but at the same time, you know, last night when I went over there and talked to her and tried to talk to her, uh, about God, she just had that look that she always gets. And I'm like, you don't want to hear this. She said, no, I've heard it a thousand times. I don't want to hear it. I have no one that wants to talk about God. You know, how can you not? You know, and there's been times my wife's got after me. And she said, you're too obs obsessed with God. And how can that, how, how can that be a bad thing? That, that's To me, that's what everything's about. That's why we're not together today, unfortunately. <clears throat> But uh, I, I was thinking of, I want to be effective, and I don't want to just make videos to make videos. And then I was talking to my youngest son the other day, and I was like, well, I, I can't think of, I've talked about Psalm 83 war. We're in Psalm 83 war. Rapture's about to take place. There's, there's other brothers in Christ who are better at looking at the stars. And I'm not talking about astrology or whatever where you, you do the, the zodiac and all that. That's ungodly. Satan takes good and bad. I mean, it takes the good and makes it bad. I mean, look at, uh, I always use an example, the sign of the covenant, the Noah covenant, God made with Noah by the, the rainbow. And then here the uh, gay community uses that for their pride flag. But they, they take something that's a blessing and then make it horrible. And so, uh, <clears throat> but God's there for us. And, and I, I lost my train of thought again. Uh, my imperfection. <laughs> That's to do with my imperfection, and I apologize. As many times as I restart videos, it gets to the point where it's like, I, I've already started this one twice already, so uh, I'll bear through it. And try to get back to my train of thought. I have trouble with the VA and, and I do counseling. I mean, I go and, and do counseling with them where they cancel me or PTSD and stuff. And, and I lose my train of thought. And that's something I deal with. And that's something where I have, if I didn't have the hope of the rapture of the church, I'd be lost because my, my, my future is not bright. I'm having a lot of health issues and now I'm getting to the point where. I'm having memory issues and I'm missing things and even making a video sometimes it's a struggle. And they keep telling me it's part of my PTSD. Things happen. People don't understand that that when you're in combat, it stays with you. Some things. I spent almost two years in Iraq. And 
even with us soldiers, it's like a weakness if you talk about PTSD. Uh, we don't, you know, we're strong. You know, that's what our life's about, if, especially for infantry. You know, I'm a physical man, and that's what I'm dealing with that I can't physically, because of my back, I can't do things I used to do. And uh, it bothers me, because I'm used to being physical. You know, I, I, I've i led men into battle, and now I, I struggle doing everyday stuff. I had my grandson yesterday, had the grandkids, and I was carrying my grandson around. He's almost a year old. He's a chunky boy, and carrying him around hurts. But then when I got him in the, the carrier, that would put him in the car seat carrier thing to put, put him in the vehicle, and just carrying that from one distance to another, and I was in a lot of pain last night because I carried him around, and, and I'm thinking this... This is crazy. Here, I used to do all kinds of stuff. I used to do all kinds of power lifting, boxing, you name it, martial arts, and different things. I love combat training. I love doing. And now, physically, I can't do as much. So it's a constant struggle. It's constant faith in God. And that's what I want to lead up to. Uh, I was wanting to come up with, what can I do? I, I want to, I want to still speak about God and be effective to people. How can I still be effective? Uh, like I referred to now, you know, I, I put everything in alignment where I've talked about the Psalm 83 war. I've talked about Isaiah 17, the, the destruction of Damascus that we're going to see any, we may or may not see because the rapture happened today, but we're so close. It could happen at any time. And then I jumped around where I was talking about brothers and sisters in Christ where see things where, where there's, there's brothers, uh, in the timing of the stars, one was talking about the other day how uh, this weekend's a high rapture time because of alignments of this and that. And I made a video where I talked about September converging because I've always had the mindset that, that this year that the uh, uh, way things were looking, September, October time frame is the season for the rapture of the church. The harvest time, the fall harvest is when... Uh, God's going to harvest the Gentiles and then everything is left for the Jewish people because that's what uh, tribulation is about. The tribulation is when we talk about the seven year tribulation, it's about uh, punishment on an unbelieving world and for bringing the Jewish people back to God. It has nothing to do with the Gentiles in this aspect of, you know, a lot of people. Talk about, uh, I believe it's Revelation 7 or Revelation 9. That's my memory issue again. Where it talks about uh, at the end of tribulation, tribulation, there's a great vast vast of people that are saved. And I believe that. But understand that right now, today, there's over 16 million Jews on the face of the earth. About 8 million, not quite half, is living in Israel. So... There's a lot of Jewish people to be saved. That doesn't mean they'll all be saved, but there's there's going to be millions of Jews. I really believe there'll be millions of Jews saved during tribulation. And when it talks about that, that such a vast number of people saved that it can't be counted by a man, I see that as Jewish people. I don't see as the Gentiles. Gentiles are taken up in the rapture. And I'm not saying I could be wrong, you know, there, there's there's Arabs and different people who uh, may have not heard the gospel. And that's where I'm strong about, is people that have heard the gospel and do not accept the gospel for the rapture are not saved. They're damnable. God himself will send a strong delusion, says so in Corinthians. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In Thessalonians, when Paul wrote First and Second Thessalonians. Uh, which was a letter to Thess the Thessalonians, was a, a church in Thessalonica. And I love using those, those two uh, books of the Bible so much because everybody talks about, you know, there's no such thing as pre-trib rapture, which that's exactly what those letters were about. It was to a church of young believers that after Paul left, after teaching, that... Uh, Someone coming into the church and kind of changing things out. And Paul's like, no, this is what I've told you. And he explains the rapture. And I, I recommend reading those two books. I've, I've given them previous videos many times over. People are probably tired of hearing. 
he keeps talking about these. So, but I, I, I believe, and, and there's a disservice by people when they, when they put out that, uh, left behind, you know, uh, Tim Lehane and Jenkins wrote a book series, The Left Behind. And, I, and there's a lot of mean, meaning, uh, well-meaning people. I know he, Tim Lehane's pastored many times, but I think that's a disservice because I, I don't see that. I don't see where if, if I've had people in my own family say, well, if there's a rapture and you're raptured up, then I'll know and I'll go to God. No, it's at that point, it's too late. <laughs> You'll be given over deception by God himself. And God can do anything. He's our creator. He can deceive you. He can know exactly what the rapture is about. He can know exactly, and all of a sudden, God, here's your deception. And bam, you're deceived. And you don't know you're deceived. So, because it's such a warning to people. And I, and I truly, I, I I really believe strongly in that uh, those, those Gentiles that I've heard, the gospel and don't accept the gospel and the, there's the rapture they're not going to God because they accepted the lie they put themselves over the gospel so they will not be saved what is the gospel Scott, the gospel is that Jesus Christ the Trinity Father Son Holy Ghost that Jesus Christ himself became flesh because he was with God at the be beginning of everything. And Jesus Christ himself became flesh, died on a cross, and made that blood sacrifice, a blood covenant that covers a past, present, and future sins. If you believe on him and believe that, that he was the Son of God and he came and made himself that sacrifice for our sins, and you are repentive, in other words, you don't keep doing or try to not do. Now, that's not mean we're in a flash that we don't sometimes sin. As it takes care of future sins, but that you you do not live in sin. In other words, you get away from that sinful lifestyle or whatever it is you're doing. And that believing on him, you'll be truly saved. And because of that, the grace of God saves you. For an example, someone who lives a homosexual lifestyle and realizes what they're doing, they're repenting, knowing that even though they desire these things for whatever reason, that they, they walk away from that. That doesn't mean they still may not fight their desires all their life. They're of the flesh. But don't live in a relationship and walk away from that environment. That means they can be saved. There's no one that cannot be saved. Uh, there was someone talking about a while back, Pastor, I listened to talking about Jeffrey Dahmer, if I say that correctly, who, who was serial killer, did a bunch of stuff. And, and was there a possibility of him being saved? Because in prison, he did a prison ministry. Got involved with prison ministry. Turned around and started reading the Bible. And then uh, tried to help other convict, convicts, I mean, people in prison, prisoners to uh, go to God. So can he really be saved? And the answer is yes. And he can say, how can such an evil person be saved? Because we all have the capability of, of being severely evil. And we all have capability of being good, each each one of us. And it's not up to us. That's up to our Father. And we don't put, we try to put limitations on God, but God has no limits. God can save anybody. God can take evil and switch it to good and, and bring someone who's been totally evil. Look at Paul. I'm about to talk about Paul. In a minute, and I've already mentioned him about writing to the Thessalonians. Paul killed Christians. Paul was there for the stoning of Stephen. Paul endorsed it. That's what he went around and did. Except his name was not Paul, then it was Saul. And then when he became a Christian, he changed his name from Saul to Paul. And then many would say, wait, they'd be, cur they'd be cautious when he would go out and preach because they'd be like, is this a, not the one that called himself Saul? Because they didn't want to be trapped. They didn't want to be killed. And he's going out preaching the word, and they're like, well, we're going to accept the word, then he'll come kill us. So, But yet God used him because by being a Roman citizen, he was able to go places and travel and do things where other people weren't quite able to do. 
because, you know, the Romans had this big wide territory and he was able to go these areas. So God used him in many ways. But yet there's many times Paul went to prison and things. He suffered a lot. He had a physical ailment. We don't know what that was. Some suggest it might have been eyesight, trouble with his eyesight, because he writes later about trouble with his eyesight. But he was older then. So, you know, that could, could have been that. But he was, uh, he had some ailment and he was able to perform miracles. But yet he couldn't heal himself. And the reason being is God used the miracles for authentication or proving his word and his gospel. And let the apostles be able to do things to heal people. He didn't come there to, to give healing to everybody. He, he healed people to get them, to teach them, have, give them faith. Faith so they know uh, the word of God. Now, a lot of things I know, a lot of times I make videos and things go in and out of my mind. That's the mind I got. But one thing I, I want to talk about or throw in quick is if you, if you want to really know a, a good assessment of someone who's in the scriptures, and I listen to him a lot, and well, I've started to a few weeks ago, and I really like, like him as a good brother in Christ, and that's Ross. And Ross has a YouTube channel called New News. He also has a... a I believe his webpage, but I haven't been to his webpage. Uh, but but he has a YouTube channel called New News, and he just recently, uh, matter of fact, I think it was yeah, it was yesterday. There goes my mind. Yesterday morning, he put out a video that shows the chrono the chronologically. If I say that correctly, shows the correct <laughs> <coughs> excuse me verses and everything about where we are at. <coughs> excuse me been so sick lately um where we're at with uh psalm 83 war and everything what's about to take place and about the rapture and because so he was talking about he gave he was like he he, he thought the rapture would be within two to four weeks you know and just, just throw out a time not, you don't know the day or an hour but he knows we're that close <clears throat> and that uh i, I recommend so much to look at his latest video, and I should have wrote down, but I don't remember the latest title of it. <clears throat> Very sorry about my uh, sciences and my code. That's the bad thing about my cancer is uh, I have my immune immune system is very low, and, and when I get colds and stuff, I have to be careful. And of course, everybody's like, "Oh, COVID!" Well, I had COVID actually over a year ago, and had COVID and lasted three or four days. After that, I was good to go. Uh, I don't take no shot or vaccine for COVID. Don't need to. My body fought it off. Uh, but I've had friends of mine die of it. Uh, that YouTube, I'm not going to go into all that. But he, he gave a, uh, gives a good video, a really good video. I think one of the best out there that explains everything. But we have brothers and sisters of Christ, no timing of stuff. And, and the body, it's like person does this and this and this, and we have different gifts and abilities to do things so i reg i do not know any of the things about the stars i'm at revelation 12 sign and different things like that i looked at that um i do i, I like i said we're in the season uh that we you know i looked at uh feast of trumpets and things like that which represents the uh rapture of the church I do understand we're in a jubilee year, which puts us. I'm sorry, my lighting is my lights going out. It's lighting in the room. It's up and down. Jubilee year offsets everything by 30 days. So I was thinking like September, you know, sometime in September the rapture. But so it turns everything over to October. We'll see. I just know that time is near and the time is close. But what I wanted to title this was the finish line. The rapture. I wanted. I wanted to put out. I don't want to stop making videos. I, I want to speak more about God, but I want to be productive. And I know I, I struggle uh, with everything. Uh, but what I would talk about was uh, how we got to push ourselves. And what I explained was I retired from the military. I did 21 years in the United States military. And 
the last two years was really a struggle. I had a lot of health issues, and I pushed it twice. I turned down promotion. I retired just a sergeant. I always joke around. I won't see my time at the rapture of the church. It's going to happen beforehand. And I was saying that over 10 years ago. And when you're in the, the guards, it's not like full-time military. You get your retirement as soon as you retire. And the guards, you get it at, at, it's from the state. You get it at 60. And I'm 58 years old. So I just to say, I'm not going to see my retirement from the military. But uh, it cost me. It cost me a lot. Because that's just my disabled. I have a lot of health issues because of it. But the last last time, how I was able to get through, especially the last two years, was a struggle. I still kept up all the fiscal stuff, uh, going out there and doing the PT and doing that, running, training with my guys. And the reason why I turned down promotion twice because I loved working with the soldiers. I loved just being a sergeant. I didn't want to go staff sergeant above. I didn't want to be put behind a desk. That's what they were wanting to do. I didn't want to do that. I want to be just the fiscal man I am and, and train and road march. But it was tough. And for one example, I uh, I remember one weekend I was training with the guys. We did a road march on a Saturday, and then Sunday we were going to be on the range and doing the uh, uh, 50 cal and, and some other uh, things out there. And, and so uh, that Saturday night, I, I got my guys in bed around 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And we were able to actually, that time, that weekend we weren't in the field, we were actually we was able to use the, the barracks. So we went over to the barracks. We did the road march, went to the barracks and told them I was going to take it easy on the next day. We're going to drive the Humvees out to the range and not march out there since we did the road march and the day before. But my body, I had, uh, I have a bad hip and uh, I made it through, you know, working coal mine, different things. I was having so much pain and I went to this country doctor and he had me walk around a little bit. And it's funny because he didn't even take x-rays. He knew what was messed up. I broke my left leg as a young boy. So I always thought my leg turned to the side was because if I broke it, I was so young. Uh, church picnic. Uh, I was jumping from one picnic table to another. I was little and I tried to jump and I missed. Broke my leg in front of everybody. So anyway, so uh, I always thought my leg, I, the way I did my hip was because of that. And reality is... I have, I've always had a, uh, my hip socket is not oval like it should be. And I have excess bone on the outside. So my, actually my hip is kind of squared off. And I always thought it's the way I broke because I broke it, you know, and I, as a kid and I couldn't keep off of my parents' stories like they had a cast. And they, I was little, I was running all over the place. And they can't believe it. So but he looked at the way I walked. He said, no, something ain't right here. So he sent me to St. Louis and I went to see a surgeon. And of course, at the time, I couldn't have the surgery, and I've never had the surgery. But what my hip was is trying to pop out a socket towards my groin, and that's what was causing the severe pain. While well, I'm in the infantry during road marches and everything else, plus I'm an underground coal miner at the time. I was working underground coal mines. So needless to say, the being bent over and the, my kind of lifestyle was making it worse. And it would be severe pain. It, when it would probably pop out a socket, I'd have to move around. It was just... I can't, this excruciating pain. And so uh, I would uh, train, like a, like a perfect example that weekend, uh, I got my guys in bed and then I was to get up at 0500, 5 o'clock in the morning, get my guys up at 0530 and get them ready, get them breakfast and get them over the range and spend about 12 hours in the range, then go head home. Well, I got up at like at 0400 in, in severe pain and quietly, as much as I could, made it into the bathroom. And I spent an hour in there walking around. And I would go from one wall to the next, just trying to, and praying to God the whole time to give me the strength to get through. Didn't want my guys to know what's going on. Keep it a secret from them, you know. And I, I'd be bent over, walk around and walk. Well, finally, I, I'd be able to stand up straight. And finally, I'd work through the pain. And I mean, just full sweat and just, oh my gosh, the pain. I just, I made it through the pain. Then, luckily, I made it through the pain in time to get my guys up. Got them up, got them out there. And, and grumpy old sergeant, you know, they're always like, wow, man, that, that sergeant's always grumpy. Because well, I'm in pain. <laughs> I'll be mean to the guys. And get them out there and, and get them trained and, and things like that. Prepare them for combat if, if that's what need be. And so I did that. But I made it through 
and like I said, those last two years were such a struggle because of God. I mean, God, God gave me the strength and, uh, I, I just went to God to everything. Everything was rough. When I had my cancer, I had, I was stage four rectal cancer after I retired from military. Everything happens within a few years. And I found out I had an, a cancer and, uh, I was elated, and then my wife was really upset with me. Uh, she's like, how, how can you be so selfish? Because, you know, you got your family. Well, I love my family. But all my life, I've heard about God and talked about God, and now I have the opportunity to see God. And so uh, I I thought this was it. You know, this is, this is it. I was going to see God and, and go to God and God saved me and which is a good thing because I've had since then I've had three other grandkids born uh, my daughters had uh, that was from my son now my daughters had since then two miscarriages so I've got two grandkids waiting for Papa in heaven and I truly believe that so I got a lot of grandkids and so uh, and my 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 daughter her her first child uh, of course, she didn't have mis she had miscarriage, then she had Jack, and then later she had another miscarriage. Well, Jack, he's about 10 years old now. And he's very into the Word. I very For a young boy, I'm able to do a lot with him. He's my little mother's grandson. He's my buddy, and uh, we do a lot together. But through my cancer, I had... Uh, You, I had 80% blockage in my lower intestines, so you did the radiation and you just pass that. Basically, you're trying to shrink up the uh, uh, tumors and pass everything. Well, be blunt, it's like cracking razor blades. Very painful. And mine was so painful that uh, I lost my voice the last two weeks. I couldn't speak because I was screaming every time. I, and, of course, you're going all the time, going to the bathroom all the time. The first few weeks of radiation treatment, nothing. I didn't feel nothing. And then he, they told me, they said, it's going to get, it may get bad. Everybody's different. Well, yeah, it got bad and it got worse. And like I said, I lost my voice. I remember my daughter came by to visit one time. She was in the other room. And she left the house crying. She heard me screaming. And that's with me taking morphine even. I had morphine at the house they had me take. And when I talked to the, the my cancer doctor later, he said, so I'm on your top 10 for making it as bad as I had it. And he said, you're number one. After over 20 years of cancer, you're the one I didn't think going to make it. I know. I mean, I know he was talking to me. He didn't want to say, I don't think you're going to make it. But I made it. But we talked because he, he can't talk about other people, patients. But he said he had a, a female patient same time he had me that's similar type of cancer. And she had radiation treatment and didn't bother her. But then she didn't pass. She had, uh, when she went to have her surgery, she uh, had, uh, I don't know how much of a tumor she had. It wasn't as big as mine, he said, but most of it was there. Like 70% of the tumor was still there, so they had, but they were able to get it out. And she don't have a permanent cosmic bag like me. But uh, on mine, he said when they did the surgery, over 90% of the tumor was gone. That's, that's what it was. I was passing that tumor because I had over 80% blockage in my lower intestines. So I had to take out a lot. So, <laughs> but I was, you know, and he's like, and that's the way it is. With some people, they could, they never know. Now, my chemo was extensive, though. I, you know, I did 10 months of chemo. I did five different types of chemo during that time. And, man, that was some rough time. I was so weak. As I say, weak as a kitten. So, but I, I made it through. Made it through everything. And uh, God's kept me up to here. Uh, he has a purpose. I don't understand it. But my point is, I finished. I mean, I, God brought me through a lot. And it's through prayer. And God has helped me so much. I'm long-winded today, so I don't know if I'm going to use both the scriptures I got here, but I'm going to go through this scripture real quick. It's talking about the uh, finish line, and then just we are to keep going, keep going forward. We know the time is short, and uh, keep going with with God, and and 
just don't say, okay, well, I'm going to go, so I'm just going to sit here and rest the last few times, moments where there's days, hours, or just a few weeks. It's not a lot of months. I don't see Christmas. I don't see being here for Christmas. I made a statement to my daughter the other day. She's planning Thanksgiving already, and I, I said, I don't see myself being here for Thanksgiving. Christmas, definitely not. And Thanksgiving, and like I say, I could be wrong on many things. It may be a little bit longer, but I really don't, I don't see that. Uh, I believe we're in the harvest time, and it's a fall harvest for the Gentiles. 1 Corinthians 9, 1 through 27. This is about Paul speaking to the Corinthians, one of his letters. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? And have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as others, apostles and the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working? Who goeth to warfare at any time at his own charges, who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth of the flock, and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or say not the law, the same also. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox, that treadeth out the corn. Doth God make tear, make, sorry, doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he altogether for our sakes, for our sakes no doubt this is written, that he that ploweth plow in hope, and that he that Threshest in hope shall be partaketh of his hope. For if he has sown unto you spiritual things, it is a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things. If others be partakers of his power over you, are you not we rather? Nevertheless, have we not used his power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ? Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the holy things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers of the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that that which preached the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things that it should be so done unto me. For if it were better for me to die, than any man should make my glory void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For if necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, I preach not the gospel. For I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will or disposition the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily that, when I preach the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. And to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without a law, as without law, being not with law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law, to the weak become as I weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run, that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth from the mastery is temperate in all things, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. If therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight, I. Not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We are to spread the gospel of the word of God to everybody for the harvest. I mean, right now is the time when we're bringing others to God. Uh, to Christ, this is what we need to be doing till the end. So the next few weeks, days, whatever time we have left, go out there and speak to others. And I know you're going to be mocked. I'm mocked by people in my own family. Pretty bad. You know, people I love and, and people I care about. But it means so much to uh, go out there and spread the word. So that when the time comes, God will look at us and, and we'll be considered worthy. And that, that's the biggest thing. The biggest shame I have is that I'm about to face God. 
finally about to face God. I thought I was going to with the cancer, but that's, that wasn't the case. But now it is the case. There's, there's no doubt. My doubt is not that I'm going to be raptured and face God. My doubt is on the timing because I, I keep looking. I am flesh. I keep looking at, well, is it this time? Is that time? Am I wrong? Is it a little bit longer? But I know it's close. You know, I, I don't see us being here at the end of the Psalm 83 war and it's taking place right now. Now, will we see the destruction of Damascus? Isaiah 17 it happens overnight and it'll be nuclear. Uh, that may happen before we are actually, because that can happen tomorrow. That can happen at any moment. But as we see everything taking place, uh, know that uh, the time is near, that it's so important to, to push things out. That's why I'm making these videos. I'm not out physically with people. So I hope and pray that by opening up about myself, that it gives understanding and, and pushes people to study God's word. And this is what this is about right here. And not to be too long-winded. I uh, had another scripture to read, but sometimes you can make things too long. Um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and talk about James real quick. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 27. I'll be quick. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. For if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally and liberated not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wa wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not the man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all its ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice, and then he is exalted. But the rich man in which he is made low because of the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but is wherein the, gra the grass and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perish. And so I shall sow the rich may, man may apologize. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted to God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted be any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived it, bring it forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is above all, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no very rollness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will he begat, he was with the word of the truth, that he shall be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to hear, speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superiority of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the grafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For be any hearer of the word, and not a doer, is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in glass. For he holdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forth getteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. For any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, be deceived his own heart. This man's religious is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, to keep himself unspotted from the world. Keep working. Keep being active. And if someone's like homebound and can't get out, prayer. Prayer is how you're active. That's how you work. Prayer does so much. And people are like, I'm insignificant. I can't do anything. I'm in a wheelchair. Or I'm this. I'm that. Pray. It matters. That the race is almost over. And you're running to that finish line. We're running to win. God bless you. And I hope to see you soon in the rapture.